Well hey folks and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. This is part four of my video series on using Google SketchUp to design small structures and this is just going to be a short lesson on how to do a foundation for your small structure and I'm just using that same 10 by 20 structure that we uh, designed in the last lesson on framing and then I'm going to show you how to, to do some simple uh, foundations for these small structures and uh, I'm using Google SketchUp version 8 uh, if you have one of the older versions, you may want to update to version 8 uh, so that we're on the same page when we're discussing tools and stuff like that. Now, uh, one of the first foundations uh, that I want to discuss is called a skid foundation. And if you if you get a go look at the sheds at Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, their sheds are almost always built on skids. Uh, that's called a non-permanent foundation. I'm going to discuss non-permanent foundations and permanent foundations. A non-permanent foundation is designed for a structure so that uh, it is not considered part of the real estate. It is not part of the, the property. Counties will allow you to build a non-permanent structure on your property, generally under 200 square feet, and it requires a non-permanent foundation. So that's what these foundations are designed for, is, is non-permanent structures. Uh, now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the first one, which is called the skids, and I'm just going to take the house off it so I can show you what they are. Underneath your structure, what you would put is uh, these 4x4 four four skids. And since you're not going to find these 20 feet long, probably, you would use two 4x4x10s, four by four by put end to end. And these should be out of uh, pressure-treated lumber, okay? So that, Because they're going to be right on the ground. You want to have them made out of pressure-treated lumber uh, so that they don't rot and the termites don't attack them. Uh, and if your ground is not too soft, if you've got fairly firm ground, uh, they, you can set it right on top of these skids and leave it just like that, and it will probably be fine because this structure isn't very heavy. Uh, if your ground is soft, uh, then you're going to have a problem because over time the, the, the weight of the house is going to push these down into the ground. So just keep that in mind. Now all these are is just 4 by 4s and then I just angled. You can see that I just cut the corner off uh, to an angle. That way, if you wanted to, you could actually hook onto this with a tractor or a truck, and you could actually move that house across the ground. You can slide it, okay? And that's why they're called skids. You can skid the house right across the ground. And they used to do this with structures quite a bit. They used to make small structures like this for mining camps and things like that. And then when they moved to a different area, they would just hook onto it with a bunch of horses, and they would drag the structure right down the, ground, uh, right down the road and just drag it to their next place where they were working on, okay? That is a decent foundation for a shed. Uh, not really recommended if I was going to use it for a house, but for a shed, that would work. And uh, again, these should be pressure-treated lumber. And uh, it, it needs to be set in a way so that you have as much support under the house as you can. Now, I've got five of them here. I've got one out here under the uh, deck plates and th three more underneath the centered about two and a half feet apart along the width of the house okay and the two by sixes run joist run this way across so I've got lots and lots of support underneath the house now that's just that's probably the cheapest way to do a small structure foundation now I'll unhide this okay and you can see the skids underneath the ends there five skids underneath the end plates if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and look underneath their sheds, that's what they use is skids. Now the next foundation is one that I actually recommend. I, I like this a lot. This is just a cement pad foundation. Still considered a non-permit foundation in most counties. Always check with your county to find out uh, what they require, but uh, generally a cement pad that's above ground is considered a non-permit foundation. Now this is just a poured cement pad. And then it uses J-bolts. And I put the J-bolts in mesh in here just to show you what I'm talking about. These are called J-bolts. And uh, that's because they're shaped like a J. You can see they come down and have a hook on them. That's called a J-bolt. And then this is mesh, uh, construction mesh, that goes inside the cement pad. When you're pouring a cement pad, if you don't put mesh in it, over time it's going to start to crumble and break apart. So you want to use construction mesh inside your cement pour. And if it's a very long pour, you'd also use rebar. Uh, for a small house like this where it's only 10 by 20, you probably wouldn't need rebar, but you should use construction mesh. Then you use these J-bolts. While the, the cement is still wet, you drop your J-bolts into place, 
and let the cement harden around them and then those become the anchors for your walls and you'll notice that this does not have the floor built into it the cement pad actually becomes your floor which saves you some money you don't have to build in all those two by sixes or sheath it with subflooring instead the cement pad becomes your floor and you just put your bolts in where you want them to go through your two by four studs then you would bore a hole through the two by four studs and drop the the sill plate down on it then using a washer and a lock nut you lock the entire structure right down to the cement pad very very strong sturdy uh, construction method uh, that I really like then on top of this cement pad you can put either a pad and carpet or you could use a pad and hardwood flooring uh, would work really well and that takes some of the stress off your knees if you don't want to be walking right on cement now, some people don't mind a cement floor I think they're kind of hard I would put a pad and a flooring uh, sheathing of some type on it but if you want you can just paint the cement and just use that as the inside of the house too so that's just a poured cement pad if you've never done any cement work there's lots of videos on YouTube that shows you how to do poured cement pads uh, but you're going to use J bolts and construction mesh and possibly some rebar uh, reinforcement inside your pad now that's a, a nice way and it's actually even though cement is quite expensive Portland cement has gone way up in price uh, but if you are not having to build the inside floor if you're not having to build this floor here of your structure you're not having to put sheathing and two by sixes floors down here uh, then you're actually saving quite a bit of money that can be applied towards the cement pad so over the long run it's probably about the same cost as would be doing it uh, uh, with a different type of foundation and a floor okay I like that type of foundation now the next one that I like is using deck deck block and this is how I built my cabin and uh, what we're using is a product called deck block now you can download these from the Trimble library these deck blocks and you can just use them and then I've got I just made my own uh, two inch thick 18 by 18 inch cement pad which is also called a patio or a deck block a patio block uh, you can get these patio pavers at any garden supply or uh, construction supply store they're just an 18 by 18 inch paver now the reason I put those underneath the deck blocks is that's helped spread out the weight uh, because the weight of the house I don't want it to be on a, a small pad I want it to be on a, as big a pad as I uh, can provide it inexpensively so these 18 by 18 pads work really well to spread the weight out of the house now I'll just show you underneath this hide this you can see that I've got these located on all the corners along the ridge boards a, a row in the middle this one is offset a little bit because I wanted it to be underneath the 2 by 6 that runs underneath these here are just underneath the uh, plate deck plate on the front and back but this one here is underneath the 2x6, so that's why it's offset a little bit. Uh, the rest of these are all just lined up with the outside edge of the structure. Okay, uh, That is an inexpensive way to do a, a small structure foundation. Uh, but it's still going to be, by the time you calculate how much the floor is going to be in the house, and the cost of these pads and deck blocks probably isn't going to be that much more for a cement pad that we used in this other structure so keep that in mind it may cost you about as much to do a cement pad like this as it does to do the deck block over here so you might want to calculate your costs first before you decide on what type of foundation you want to use now I would also put in hurricane ground ties and I'm going to show you those in this other structure but uh, I would put in hurricane ground ties at least in the corners and tie the structure right down to the ground using hurricane ground ties and uh, I'll show you in the other structure what those look like. So let me un unhide this. And this structure we're using a rubble trench. Okay, this next foundation type is called a rubble trench or a footer wall. Uh, if it's a rubble trench, it's generally considered a non-permanent foundation. If you do a footer wall, it might be considered a, a, a permanent foundation in some counties, so you want to check. Uh, and basically what it is, it's a trench that is one foot deep and usually about one foot four inches or so wide that's backfilled with uh, rubble which is uh, gravel of about one inch in size gravel and I'll pull this off to show you and uh, the trench is dug down into the ground as you can see okay all the way around the outside edge and usually one trench across the middle 
uh, to act uh, as a support for the middle. Now this is used if you have soggy ground, mushy ground, uh, or sandy soil uh, that's not very stable. Uh, this will give you a more permanent footer underneath the structure. And uh, it's a bit more expensive and more time consuming to do this, but they used to do this a lot with houses uh, because cement was hard to come by and a lot of times they had rubble left over from some other structure that they would break up and, and throw down into the trench to create a rubble trench. And so that's where it got its name from. And uh, what you can do on top of it is you can just dry stack cement block. These are flat end cement block, which you can get at any construction store. Uh, and you just dry stack them. They do not have to be grouted. Uh, and they're just dry stacked end to end. Those go around as a perimeter foundation and they just sit right on top of the rubble trench and then I would recommend that you use uh, hurricane tie down straps ground straps you can get these at any place that sells uh, trailer supplies generally or you can order them online I know you can get them through Amazon uh, that's a tra uh, that's a hurricane ground strap okay right there and what it does is it's got a long uh, post po post that goes down into the ground that anchors it into the ground and then it has a bolt uh, that goes through it that you attach the strap to and then the hurricane strap just attaches to your floor joist and you put one of those in each of the corners and then wherever else usually about seven feet apart is what they recommend on those uh, you can see I've got them in each of the corners and then I would also put a couple I don't show them but I would probably put at least two more or three more along each of these and maybe a couple in the middle here just to tie the structure and that will hold the structure right down against these blocks and down to the ground so it really gives it a nice firm secure uh, footing that's called a trench wall or a, tr a rubble trench uh, foundation now if you want to make a footer what's called a footer instead of using gravel you would use cement and you would just fill these trenches up full of cement uh, level to the top of the surface and then you would stack your blocks on top of that now these deck blocks or these uh, cement blocks again these are available in the Trimble library all you need to go up and, and just uh, type in cement block and these will pull up and uh, you can you can drop those into your drawing and then you can copy and paste them and, and move them wherever you want to make your foundation so that is another sturdy foundation it's a non-permanent foundation in most areas called a rubble trench foundation good solid foundation now here's the drawback of that let me unhide this real quick The drawback of that type of foundation is it's going to be more costly. It's, you're going to spend more time digging. Uh, gravel's not cheap. Uh, cement blocks are not cheap. So by the time you, and you have to build a traditional floor on your house to use this type of system. By the time you calculate the amount for all of that work and your floor, it's probably not going to be much more to build a cement pad foundation. Okay. So just keep that in mind is it might be cheaper to do the cement pad than it would be to do the uh, cement block foundation uh, depending on cement costs in your, your area. And it's going to take more work to do a rubble trench than it is to do a cement pad or use the deck block system. Now this last one is a permanent foundation. Okay, But a lot of people have been asking me how to do a pier uh, foundation. So I'm also going to show you a pier foundation. Now, if you don't have to worry about codes or if they require a permanent foundation, you can use piers. Uh, they are more expensive and a lot more work, okay? So you need to be aware of that. And what they are is cement piers that go down below the frost line, which in most areas is about three feet, but it depends on your area. Uh, you can ask your county office, and they can tell you what the frost line is, how deep your piers need to go. Uh, in this area, it's three feet, and that's in most areas that freeze real heavy it's going to be around three feet. Now uh, these go down into the ground three feet and then they stick up usually about 18 inches or so above the ground level and then they have anchors that hold on to uh, a four by eight or what are two two by eight set side by side makes a four by eight so that becomes the beams uh, that hold underneath the floor. Very very strong structure uh, foundation used for a lot of houses uh, even much larger houses use piers instead of a foundation wall which is extremely expensive and requires forms and everything like that uh, these you can get sono tubes you can buy these at any place that sells uh, construction materials and this is a sono tube that has a 
a uh, pyramid pier underneath it. Now the ones that I show on the cabin are just straight piers, uh, but you can get these, and I recommend them called Sono Tube, S O N O T U B E, and you get them that has the, the Sono Tube on it, and then it has this base, and you put the base down below the frost line down here at the bottom. And you fill it up first and you let it harden. Then you put your sonar tube and you fill your sonar tube all the way up to the top. And while it's still wet, you put your anchor on it. The, the base will keep the tube from grabbing the, the frost from grabbing on the tube and pulling the whole base up. Okay? And that's why it's used that way. And usually you, they, these would have rebar down inside them as well. And so you'd usually put at least two or three pieces of rebar down inside to hold this tube and the base down in place. Uh, and then it forms around these pier braces, and the pier braces lock onto two 2x8s two set lengthwise, and those becomes your girder for your floor. Now I'll pull the house off just so you can see this. You can see that there's just three of them that set on the piers. This would be two 2x8s two set uh, lengthwise against each other. Makes a 4x8 that sits inside that uh, pier brace. Okay? And that those go underneath your floor joists to give you a very, very strong. And then you would use metal straps to tie your floor joists to these uh, girders that go underneath the structure. Okay? This is for a very, very, if you want a really strong floor or if you're required by code to build a permanent foundation. This is less expensive than doing a foundation wall that also has to go three feet deep, okay? Uh, but it's still going to be more expensive. It's going to add quite a bit to the expense of the house. Uh, but if you need a permanent foundation, you can use piers uh, and supports like this, girders underneath it, uh, for a permanent foundation. Okay, those are the basics of doing a foundation. And you can get these piers Again, through the Trimble Library, you can download the piers, uh, and then you can scale them to whatever size you want, and uh, you, you pull the length down to whatever, whatever depth you need for your uh, frost line. Now, frost heave is something that I want to discuss. Uh, frost heave happens in all ground that has moisture in it. When it gets cold enough, it freezes the moisture, moisture expands, and the soil rises up, and it will grab onto anything that's in the soil and lift it up, too. So when you have piers like this, it will grab onto the cement and it will pull it upwards and that can sometimes with a larger structure it will cause frost heave and it may heave unevenly causing the foundation to crack causing the house interior walls to crack you've seen houses that have uh, cracks in the walls or cracks in the foundations that's because of frost heave and it's because the ground doesn't heave evenly on a large structure now with small structures that's generally not a problem because they're small enough that any, where they sit the ground is going to heave evenly so that's why you can use a non-permanent foundation like these and the ground will heave underneath these evenly uh, because they're not down into the ground you don't have to worry about the the ice hooking into them and causing frost heave instead the whole house will rise up in the winter time it will rise up a half inch inch or so uh, and then as it melts and thaws out in the spring the whole house will go down again evenly and so you shouldn't have a problem with small structures with frost heave Frost heave is generally only a problem with very large structures, or if you've got multiple walls. Like if I had another wall coming off of this house over here, uh, and another wall coming off the back, that can sometimes cause a problem because frost heave will cause that to uh, to raise up unevenly, and then it might pull away the wall where it's connected. So just be aware of that. Uh, but generally, with small structures like this, you're not going to have a problem with frost heave with a non-permanent foundation. Okay, folks. Those are examples of how you can do a foundation for your small structures, sheds, houses, cabins, whatever you're building there. I uh, hope you enjoyed that lesson. Please subscribe to my channel, give my videos a like, and visit my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com. Take a look at what we got going on there. Uh, go check out some of the designs that have been submitted for the contest. And if you'd like to submit a design, we'd love to see your cabin designs or house designs in that contest. Okay, folks, have a great day.